of Maxim, how to make state-of-the-art Maxim materials. What we offer in this course, we offer you access to people who really do this work uh, uh, every day or almost every day in the lab. So you will learn from the best in the field, from people who have lots of experience in doing something they are going to uh, talk about. And this is very important, and this is different from majority of courses you can find elsewhere. Moreover, I'm not aware of Maxine courses being ever offered by anyone. And tomorrow we will discuss processing of materials, how to make films, uh, solutions, uh, uh, fibers out of those maxines. But in disperse them in water. You can see three different maxines, three different colors, and flakes are being dispersed in water, forming colloidal solution. It again comes because of high negative charge on the surface of maxine. Something will be discussed tomorrow and you see this one liter bottles of dilute colloidal solutions of different colors of different maxines. So basically those are uh, things that you will learn in this course, how to make maxine powders, flakes, films, how to prepare colloidal solutions, how to transform this colloidal solution by different methods into maxine film, ideally reaching extreme properties like very high conductivity, like very high mechanical strengths or whatever you're looking for. And sieving the powder to a specific size so you can make sure that everything will remain constant. Moreover, I recommend trying to collect as much data as you can at each step. So taking XRD at this step and then taking XRD at the next step. So with this synthesis, you'll notice there's a little bit of an extra aluminum and we we do that because it, it improves the synthesis process. Acidic. So in all of these cases, it's very, very important to clean as you go to make sure nothing happens. It's, we're trying to put as many engineering controls in place to ensure that no exposure happens. You have the vanadium to aluminum carbide max phase. You place it in a uh, high density polyethylene or plastic bottle. Uh, and then in that bottle, you have the HF. So for the case of vanadium to carbide, uh, vanadium to aluminum carbide, uh, as we will see in the next slides, the etching condition is usually used a highly concentrated 48% to 50% hydrofluoric acid. And then based on the amount of the powder you are using, uh, you are going to need different volume of the etchant. So usually for every one gram uh, of maxes, you need around 10 milliliter of the etchant. And after that, uh, you put the powder max base and continuous stirring it for the required time to uh, completely or partially etch the aluminum layers from your max base. If you don't have access to these large centrifuge tubes, just use multiple number of a smaller centrifuge, like at least four fifty milliliter, and then use the pipette as you see here to divide the uh, etched maxim particles to those centrifuge tubes because of the harsh etching conditions that are used and the hydrogen evolution during the etching. So if you are etching new maxines, new max phases and producing new maxines and you're using milder conditions, you might end up basically uh, etching your max phase, but don't see this uh, occurring and layered layered structures or maybe your maxine will even look like something, your max with a very small difference. So don't get discouraged if you see that that's the case for some of the max phases. Uh, and basically you need to do several different characterizations at, as Mike and others will cover in their characterization course uh, during the week to make sure that you have basically etched uh, your max phase and removed the aluminum. Presentation for today. Thank you all of you for attending the, uh, our session. As Armin mentioned, uh, we tried to answer all of your questions or as much as possible or we could. If your question was not answered, feel free to email us. We will collect all the presentations or, or all the questions and we'll try to answer during our uh, Friday session. Okay. Um,
Well, again, um, goodbye, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us uh, today, and uh, we look forward to seeing all of you tomorrow. I think uh, by now uh, we probably uh, have uh, all the people uh, who were uh, planning to join, and uh, it's time to start uh, the second day of our uh, synthesis course. Also, have viscoelastic materials. They do demonstrate both liquid-like and solid-like behaviors, and make things fall into this category. Ration studied for two systems. If you see here, we do reach the Newtonian region much earlier in these cases, but we do observe it at much higher um, concentrations. So, so that's again another thing. And the dashed line here represents the shear rate values that I use to spin these fibers into fibers. So in this case, I was lucky enough to be able to capture it with the rheometers that we had. But you know, if it was about 1,000 in per second, then I would have had to use a um, viscometer. Syndication, shake the vial. The next tip uh, that uh, actually was noticed by Simge is uh, make sure to fully immerse your probe when you uh, do the probe syndication. Uh, we notice that uh, when the probe is not fully immersed, the size is not consistent. So make sure that you uh, are consistent with your with the whole um, volume of your solution and the amount of the probe that you dip in in this solution. In this case, uh, uh, again to reiterate, what matters the percentage of the probe that you immerse, so how deep you immerse the probe, and also the total volume of your solution. Try to keep those uh, things consistent and you will get the best results. In this case, uh, uh, she used uh, sonication to disperse uh, maxine in uh, those specific solvents. And, and as you can see, even after 96 hours, the uh, maxine is still dispersed in uh, said solvent similar to, to water. But uh, as I mentioned before, uh, do not expect single layer maxine present in all of the solvents, including ethanol, because uh, it uh, causes uh, aggregation of uh, this uh, aggregation of maxine. Uh, Here, um, you need high concentration to get, you know, um, enough thickness. Again, depends on how thick you want your film to be. Um, the typical value here is also larger than five milligram per ml to get a uh, reasonably thick film. And the volume should be large here. This is about um, 30 ml of maxine solution, but that depends on you know how, how big is your substrate. If you only want to deposit on a small piece of um, silicon wafer, you can change the container and you, you, you need less solution. But the goal is to have enough solution to fully immerse your, your um, substrate. Um, I realize it's getting very late in Asia and we have many registered participants from Korea, China, Australia. So we're going to uh, stop here and we look forward to welcoming uh, most of you to our characterization uh, course as majority of uh, participants registered for both courses. Uh, you uh, will receive uh, a message uh, with a link if you have not received it yet. And I look forward to seeing you uh, tomorrow. Uh, your instrument will give you an estimate of what is the, uh, how good are your measurements? Is it reliable? Can I trust it? And this is usually called a quality report. You can see this um, just example uh, of our uh, quality report from our instrument, uh, Malvern uh, Zetasizer. And there are several numbers that you should pay attention to. Uh, the first one is the intercept. And this value can be used as uh, your evaluation of signal to noise ratio. Um, usually it should be one, 
and if it is uh, lower than 0.6, then uh, the noise is probably too high and you might want to remeasure it. The second important value to pay attention is polydispersity index. Uh, that's a tricky one with maxins because A, as you remember, uh, after synthesis, we if you have not done any processing, you end up with a very polydispersed sample. So that value is usually high for maxins. And uh, second of all, uh, maxins are um, sometimes not perfect. Sometimes they look like lawn flakes. Sometimes they look like fla flakes that someone was biting from it. Uh, so those parameters, the fact that it's not sphere, also adds to polydispersity index. So uh, don't be discouraged if it is um, not low enough for you just needs to be within the range of the instrumental um, capabilities. Seeing the higher ordered peaks does not mean you do not have a delaminated solution. If you have, um, so if you have a kind of a rougher sample, so if you have, uh, like Simge was talking during the processing section, making those very beautiful fibers coated with vaccine, if you do x-ray diffraction on these, you will see these higher ordered peaks. And that's not you know, saying Simgate didn't delaminate this, it's because you're not having a perfect flat alignment. It's because she's putting it on a curved surface. So you're seeing these different uh, crystallographic reflections occurring. And so there's this very nice paper done by Michael Guido and Michelle Barsoom, where they actually do this. So they take a delaminated Maxine uh, film and they take the same film, they do x-ray diffraction, they turn it, they do x-ray diffraction, they tilt it, and they do x-ray diffraction. And you can see this is all the same film, but just based on what orientation it has, you see different reflections. And so you can consider, uh, I, I will kind of preview Adam's talk a little bit, you can consider this to be essentially a zone axis. So if you have different orientations of your Maxine sheets, it's essentially, uh, you're looking at different zone axes of your films. And so Adam will talk about this more with selected area electron diffraction, but that's kind of what you're seeing here. You're seeing only some orientations in your Maxine films. This molten salt uh, synthesis, um, uh, molten salt etching of Max using copper chloride um, salt at high temperature um, shows that you can have chlorine terminations and also tries to um, add uh, some uh, clarify um, uh, or add to the discussion of assignment of um, XPS spectra, in, uh, especially titanium uh, region spectra. Um, and then this other uh, publication as well shows replacement of bromine uh, surface terminations with other surface terminations such as uh, sulfur, selenium, tellurium, um, and even no ter surface terminations. And even just by using a uh, survey spectra, you can see that removal of all the bromine uh, peaks uh, disappearing and then appearance of this uh, tellurium peak. Uh, however, they also do provide other characterization uh, to corroborate this XPS um, uh, results. This is pretty straightforward. Um, the, uh, the first image you see here um, is from uh, the, the first paper of ordered uh, double transition metal maxines um, from an alumni um, and, and good friend, uh, Babak uh, Amasori, um, who is now a professor at uh, IUPUI. Um, so, so in this image, uh, we have a, a scanning uh, transition uh, electron microscope uh, image of uh, the 4-3 structure of MO2, TI2, C3. So, um, you know, you see that uh, we have the individual scans of molybdenum and titanium with the, coupled with the um, STM image um, and overlaid uh, to show that, that, that there is ordering um, in this structure. So the TI2 uh, titanium layers are, are sandwiched by two molybdenum layers. Um, even though it is outside of the scope of this presentation, I would like to, to uh, know that these uh, approaches exist. Uh, one, one of them is you can measure uh, mechanical properties 
uh, of Maxin using atomic force uh, microscopy. I will direct you into several publications. One of them is uh, shown here. And in this case, uh, authors, what they did, they uh, used Maxin membrane and they uh, poked pretty much this membrane with FM tip uh, measuring force deflection curve and fitting this uh, curve, uh, which allows you to determine elastic properties of individual Maxin flakes. Another uh, approach is uh, to measure adhesion uh, energy uh, of uh, Maxin uh, flakes and in many cases, especially in modern IFM instruments, you can do this very easily using a uh, uh, special IFM tip approaching uh, with uh, the sample and withdrawing it and measuring the uh, force displacement uh, curve during this process and feeding it. It will allow you to determine ad adhesion energy in this case. In, uh, I, I will, If you're interested, I will direct you uh, to this particular publication. I also would like to, you to know that there are some uh, electronic properties that you can measure with special uh, force microscopy technique. One of them is called uh, Kelvin Pro uh, force microscopy uh, technique. IFM is also a very convenient uh, tool to, to do in situ experiments. Uh, experiments in liquid. You can Im image samples in liquid. So if you're interested, uh, FN can provide you this possibility. And there are some uh, publications available uh, on electrochemical performance or electrochemical measurements of uh, maxines using uh, electrochemical atomic force microscopy. I would like to thank you all. Uh, well, first, I would like to thank all of our panelists. Um, who gave all of these wonderful presentations over the last four days. Uh, we've covered uh, a dizzying array of topics from synthesis processing to many different forms of advanced characterization. Um, I hope for all of our attendees, uh, this was a very valuable set of courses, whether you took um, just the synthesis and processing, did just the characterization, or most of you were with us throughout all of it. Um, we have shared many years of experience throughout all of us um, in all of these different topics. And we hope you have learned a lot, whether you're just starting Maxine research like a number of you, or whether you're one of the more um, experienced Maxine researchers who are joining us. Um, in all cases, we, we hope that you enjoyed our talks.